forget it. I'm not interested. Are you done your food already? Hello. Oh, jeez. It's okay. Bad stream bombing. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Cook with Kate. Sunday fun day edition, round two. We're making some pizza today from scratch. It's our beautiful dough that's been rising for 24 hours. I think this is gonna be a pretty quick stream today. The pizza won't take super long to make since we already have the dough ready. I'm just gonna form it, I think, into two separate bowls and let that rest for, let's say, half an hour before we press it all out and then make the pizzas. So we're also making brownies tonight. I'm just gonna do a little square pan of those. I have those on request, so why not? And then we'll just prep all of our pizza toppings and crush some pizzas together. If anyone is interested in the style of pizza dough, this is called a biga dough. So this is, has a pre-ferment in it, meaning like a sourdough starter or anything along those lines. And that will help to create a lot of flavor and strength in the crust instead of just using instant yeast. So I haven't made this before and I'm super excited to try it. You can definitely see how bubbly the dough is so far. And then this dough is also a little bit different because it bakes at a super high temperature around 500 degrees in your oven. It's actually meant for like a wood pizza oven or a wood stove. So that would actually get cranked up to around 600, 700 degrees Fahrenheit. You have the brownie recipe there? Or... Okay, we'll just look at the brownie recipe and while we're looking for that, are we just doing regular or like peanut butter or what? I don't know. Unless, well, I'll go online and find Okay, I'm gonna form the dough into balls. And we'll carry on from there. Just gonna move my board out of the way for a sec. You might need a little bit of flour just to shape the dough. It seems like it's pretty sticky, like it's quite a wet dough to start with. And you'll probably need like a dough cutter or a scraper. I'm gonna use this guy right here. And I'm just gonna turn the camera down so we can all look at what's going on here. Dough is like one of the coolest things to me. It's magic, especially when you don't put any yeast into it. So this is just naturally fermented. Is the best area. So you can see how stretchy it actually is. And then by us forming it into the balls now, this is going to create a little bit more gluten structure when it comes time to roll out the dough. You might just want to dump it on to some flour on your counter just so it doesn't stick too too much hey monica welcome to the pizza party we're just about to ball our dough i think i'm gonna make one round pizza and one rectangular but we're gonna ball our dough first into those different sizes and then let it rest for probably another half an hour before we actually start to top it and bake it. I 
This is what I call fancy pizza dough. There's lots of love put into it. So if you're finding it's spreading out a little bit too fast, just kind of ball it onto itself. That's why we put it on top of the flour. Mixing that little bit of flour in now is gonna create some good structure for us later on. You can kind of see how it's coming together better now. It's kind of similar to making a loaf of bread as well. This would be called folding. And when I make sourdough bread, I usually do six folds in half an hour intervals apart from each other. So it takes quite a while to develop your dough, but you don't have to knead the dough then. By doing those folds, you're incorporating the air, but also building up the structure of the gluten just over a long period of time. So that's why you get your really nice crust and then fluffy inside. So you can keep working your dough until you feel like it has enough structure. Like I said, I've never made this dough before, so I don't really know how it's supposed to turn out. I did work a lot with like a Neapolitan style pizza dough, but we made that one with yeast. So it did have a lot more structure to begin with. And it definitely wasn't as sticky as this. So I think we're getting there. It's starting to hold its shape. This is like the most fun part to me is just like, playing around with this. Kind of makes you feel like a little kid. If you find it needs a little bit more flour, then go ahead and sprinkle that on. It's not gonna hurt. So I am using for my pizza to bake in today, I have one round flat pan, which is like this size. I think it's probably 12 inches, I would say. And then this really nice, heavy, large rectangular pan. So just kind of divide your dough into what you think each pan will hold. So obviously one is bigger. There's no chocolate in this one. And then also I'm gonna make the round one a little bit more thin Neapolitan style. Whereas the rectangular one is gonna be more of like a Roman style. So fluffier dough and crust. Almost like focaccia. So now, let's get some more flour here. And then we're gonna try and ball it up. So I just pat that off. There we go. So you'll see in a sec just how stretchy this is. And depending on how many times you fold it is like how tough or strong your crust is gonna come out to be. 
So the more times you fold it onto itself, the crispier it'll be on the outside, but it'll still stay nice and fluffy on the inside. So this is still really sticky and maybe that's just how it's supposed to be. But anyway, I'm gonna put these into maybe oiled bowls instead of floured and let these go for another half an hour. for this small one. And this bigger one for the bigger piece. Grab our oil. Just use a squeeze bottle to squeeze it into the bottom there. You don't need too, too much. And then use your scraper to just lift it in your dough. Dung. And then that should rise a little bit more again over the next half an hour. And then we're gonna flatten it out. That's a little bit of a sticky situation right there. Just a little bit. I'm just gonna wash up my hands real quick. Also, whenever you're working with a really sticky dough, always wash your hands with cold water and then it won't kind of cook onto you as you're washing your hands. Just a little tip. Stay nice and clean. So I'll just put these back over here. you guys can see them transform. I'm just gonna clean up my little dough mess here. We're we making peanut butter brownies today? Yeah. We're making peanut butter brownies today. Sam wants his idea of adding chocolate is your little elbow balls at the very on top just before they're done. Oh, or when they come out. Or when they come out. Like Interesting. Yeah. That's the chocolate part. Okay, all cleaned up. Are you done with your board over here? Yeah, I just need to wipe this. to the brownies. I hope everyone's had a really good weekend so far as well. Ours has been super rainy, kind of dreary. 
Where's the recipe? Here. What is everyone's favorite kind of pizza? We're gonna be doing quite a few different kinds today. that we're using today. Which way should I go? It's an all recipes recipe. And they're actually blonde brownies, not chocolatey ones. But I'm sure you could put some cocoa in there if you wanted the chocolate flavor. You wanna bake them before you bake the pizzas? Or yeah. 350? So oven to 350 Fahrenheit. And first step. Peanut butter and margarine, or butter. First step, we're gonna cream together the peanut butter and margarine. So half a cup of peanut butter and a third of cup of butter is what we're using, not margarine. And then this actually makes the square pan, not the rectangular pan. But if you doubled it, you could get the rectangle one out. Really, you're no pineapple person? That's like my favorite one. <laughs> I find that so funny how people just are stuck in their ways. It's either pineapple or no pineapple. There is no in between. Okay, half a cup of butter you said? One third. Oh, one third. Okay, so you should look like Monica says hello. Hi. <laughs> She's being shy. Okay. So the next few ingredients, I'm just gonna list them off now so we can keep going on this pretty fast. We are going to need a two thirds of a cup of the white sugar and half a cup of brown sugar. Make sure you pack it down. And two eggs. And then half a teaspoon of vanilla extract or the like vanilla bean paste, the really good one. Yeah, we got some really good pineapple in the fridge that I'm gonna, sorry, I have to put it on the pizza though. And then this recipe actually only has one cup of flour. So it's gonna be pretty rich. What are you using to mix? Just a wooden spoon. Okay. It should be okay. Yep. I don't feel like getting a machine out for that. No. Can I chop a cup of peanut butter? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna bring the bowl over here so we can watch these brownies in action. This will work better with some room temperature butter as well, if you're finding it too hard to cream. Is it too hard? Or you can use like a stand mixer of sorts or a hand, one of those little hand mixers. You wanna make it for a second? So, this is super hard. I'm just gonna pop it in the microwave for probably 10 seconds just so we can mix the peanut butter in a lot more easy. Who else is the pineapple lover? Is it Kirsten or Leah, maybe? Oh, I think it's Jeff. Or Jeff? It's half is the pineapple lover. He would. Yeah. That sweet and salty combo. Okay, so that's better. You can tell because it's like starting to stick to the bottom of the bowl. So 
a little bit more creamy now. Let's get our peanut butter into there. We are using just a smooth peanut butter today, but if you want your brownies to have some crunch, then use the crunchy kind for sure. Add that tomato, put brown sugar in it. And how much white? Okay, two thirds of a cup of white and half a cup of brown. So just mix this up until it's nice and smooth, no big butter chunks left. I like to use the side of the bowl to just kind of mash it. Brown okay. sugar is going in. Okay, you ready for the white as well? I just need a little spoon. Put the white in. Yeah. Scrape that all out. White sugar is coming in. All the good stuff. Not good for you. have my eggs in yet. Thank you. Handy dandy spatula. Yeah, I don't know what Foof's doing today for her birthday. If she comes in though, I'll for sure give her a shout out. Scraping down the sides of my bowl here. Now I can mix in the eggs. Enjoy making brownies. I find that you can mix a lot of different things into them. And then there's also these variations with like no chocolate. I like to sometimes crumble in Oreo cookies if I want something crunchy. Okay. So that's really nice and smooth. Next thing going in is our vanilla. Good dollop of that in there. Oh, um, spray the pan? Sure. And we're gonna spray our pan, our baking pan with pan spray as well just so it doesn't stick. I mean, I doubt it will, but it's always good to be careful. Okay, next thing going in is the cup of flour and then a teaspoon of baking powder and quarter teaspoon of salt. Here's our 
flour. And then never forget the salt. Salt is like the best thing in all baked goods. Gives that nice contrast to all the sweetness. Do you want your flour to stay out? Yeah. You're gonna need it? Yeah. And then leave your flour out once you use it because we'll need that for the pizza right away. Okay, let's mix this all up here. And we're almost at our brownies. What did that take us, like six minutes? These are thick. It's giving you some arm workout. It's almost like cookie dough. Always make sure you go down and through the middle. That's where the, all the flour likes to stick. But we don't want any lumps. So, there we go guys. There's our brownie mix. If you want, I could sprinkle some chocolate chips on. But, I'm gonna pull out our little variation today. So we have oh, yeah. these yeah. little dark chocolate, crispy things, crisp pearls. And it's like crunch, like I would what a rice crispy coated in chocolate, but we don't want it to melt too much. So we're gonna put them on like right when the brownies come oh, out of the oven. So they just kind of melt and stick on. I would feel Bring this over. There's still like the trees, shrapnel yeah. or whatever is still sure. on there. They haven't cleaned up yet. I would assume tomorrow. You wanna go outside? I tell Monica about our no power Saturday, Sunday. Where you at? Okay. Just spread that out into the bottom of the pan as even as you can. Okay, that looks good. Try and scrape off anything left on the spatula. Or if you want, I guess you could lick it off. Whatever you want. And now these are going to bake for half an hour. So that gives us plenty of time to prep all of our pizza ingredients and then build them while the brownies are baking. And then we can crank up the oven and bake our pizzas. Woohoo! So these are going in. Set my timer. Actually, let's. Oops. Let's set our timer for 25 minutes and check it then. Because I like kind of gooey brownies, so I don't want to overcook them at all. These little guys can chill back here. Oh, it turned. I told her to go poop. She hey guys, around. how's everyone doing today? Yeah. Who loves pizza? Me. Yeah. Mostly Caitlin. Okay. Evan should stop yelling now, and we can get all of our pizza stuff together. So. If you want, you can just use like diced tomatoes and crush them up, but I just have a tomato sauce here that we're going to use up. And then I still have to grate some cheese, 
get the meats out and all of our herbs and stuff like that. So this is the important prep time. Okay, there's a couple different kinds of cheese here. I think I'm just gonna turn the camera down for you guys so you can like look at everything that I picked for my pizza. There's our cheeses. I have parm and two different types of matzo. Some mint, basil, and dill. Maybe we'll use some thin sliced onion on it. This is like the greatest thing to use up a lot of different things in your fridge. Because pretty much any kind of pizza is good. With some other cheeses here, a goat cheese and ricotta. And then here is the pack of meat that we are going to use today. So it's got capicolo, calabrese salami, and pepper salami. No onions. <laughs> Do you want some of Sam's bacon as well or? Uh, yeah. Then we have some homemade bacon here that's pretty much fat. <laughs> and a really nice applewood smoked ham that we're gonna slice up nice and thin. Here's our pineapple coming in. What else? You got your basil and your I think we're gonna stop there. <laughs> I think that's enough. You can get pretty creative with your pizza combos with all of this stuff. Did you put vanilla in the brownies? I did. Okay. So obviously these things don't really have to be prepped much and neither does the shaved parm. So those can just be set aside as well as the tomato sauce. It does look like these guys are growing a little bit though. They've puffed up a bit since I left them over there, so that's good. And then the next thing we're gonna do is shred up some of these cheeses. So one is a pretty soft matzo, whereas the other one's hard. And that will be like more for garnishing. And then I'm probably just gonna tear these herbs onto it. I don't really have to cut it. But if you want, you can slice it nice and thin as well. It's like the best part about pizza is you can do whatever you want. I do have some olives. I actually have these really nice, I don't know if you've had them, Cherignola olives. So they're usually like green in color and they're really big. But all we have left is the black and pink ones. So I can cut those off the pit as well. my board at? Just gonna get my board. And I'm gonna do the cheeses first. Do you want me to do so I got my grater here. Nope, you're good. Bring it on in. I doubt I'm gonna use all this cheese today, but you never know. Cheese does freeze quite well if you do have leftovers of sorts. Shredded or not shredded works. Okay, 
let's just cut this in half. I think that's a good enough portion to start with. Oh yeah, it's nice and stringy. Then I'm just gonna get a piece of wax paper, which is the universal sound for dogs to be in the kitchen. So I bought the brick instead of the pre-graded because this was like half of the price, I think, of the pre-graded like craft or crackle, cracker barrel kind. And I thought, hey, well, I'm pretty sure I'm capable of shredding some cheese at home for a lot less money than they're going to charge you to have it pre-done. So that was my reasoning for this. But you could also grate this really nice and thin too if you wanted. And I definitely find making pizza from scratch is much more rewarding than getting it delivered to your house. Although sometimes you just can't pass up dominoes. <laughs> it's getting cheesy in here today. I think maybe some has to fall off the edge here. You never know. <laughs> ah. My little sous chef in the background. Okay, we're almost there. Getting that workout in. Good. If you like cheese snacks, now is the time to hand them out. Or you can just tear it up. And I'm just going to put this over here for a pizza building station. And I think I'm going to tear up this cheese by hand, just because it's a little more soft. I would have liked to get like a nice buffalo matzah of sorts, but that does not exist where I live right now. So you got to make do with what you got. You could do bocconcini as well though. That works. So you can leave pretty big pieces of this one. And you can decide what you wanna do with it after. But you'll get a nice, nice contrast of textures and flavors by just making your cheese different sizes. You can also put this one on near the end and just have it slightly melted before it comes out of the oven. That way it's really ooey and gooey.
Really any cheese is good on pizza. I don't think I've had a bad cheese. Okay, those can just be put aside in case we need any later on. And then next thing we're going to do is, do you guys want onions on the pizza slicing or not? Okay, everyone's saying no. No onions. Did they both say no? You want onion on the pizza? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, that's it a little bit. Kate, we're doing onions still. The just crowd is yeah, torn. One half or and I'm just gonna slice these olives off of the pit. It's okay if it doesn't look that pretty. Pizza's like always beautiful in its own little way. No matter how it looks. So I'm just following the pit with my knife. And then obviously if you wanted to clean those off after, you can just eat them up. Don't have to waste that stuff. And we're over halfway on our brownies. So I think my timing is on point still. We got 11 minutes left. I don't know if everyone's or anyone's had these olives, but they're very nice and mild. They're not super briny like the green ones with pimento in them. And they definitely don't taste like the black ones that come out of the can. They're just very buttery. Just gonna grab a bowl real quick. This today, loaded Dorby is some pizza prep that's going down. So the dough on the second cam has been proofing for 24 hours. And then we got brownies in the oven for dessert and we're prepping all of our pizza toppings. talking about trolls are in the house carrying on though we are going to slice our bacon up and then we have to cook that beforehand, before we put on the pizza. a band coming up right now. That is called olives, if you're actually asking me what I'm making. I always like to cut my bacon up 
on like a cut plastic cutting board. That way your board doesn't get all dirty. But I am gonna cut up these onions first. I think I'm going to do another Italian kind of olives. They're called Cherignola. They're fancy. I'm only gonna do about half of this onion. So I'm not gonna peel off all the skin. And then I'm just gonna follow it along the edges that it already has. So if you can see all the lines there, that's what I usually use. Wow, cool. Yeah, you can pretty much get anything in North America, I think. Kind of crazy. Kind of as ruined the world, but hey, I get to make an authentic pizza at my house. There we go, those are nice and thin. Obviously you don't have to put this much on, but we're just using up stuff out of the fridge, so. We're gonna make a couple different kinds of pizzas. Maybe we'll do our pineapple as well while we're at it. Yeah, doggy. That way all of our vegetables and fruit are cut up. And then we can just move on to the meats. So I think that will be enough. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> nah, it's okay guys. It's Sunday fun day. I'm gonna slice my pineapple really nice and thin as well. That way it'll get kind of crunchy when we cook the pizza. You could also leave it in larger chunks though. It's up to you. that little core piece out of there. We don't want any chunks. Into the next bowl. So I think we'll make a ham and pineapple. We'll make a margarita. Yay, I love that monocle. It's what I'm trying to do. Trying to get everyone to like cooking at home again, even if it's by yourself. What other kind of pizzas do you guys think you wanna make? So what do we have? Like ham and pineapple. We have one. We can do bacon. Do a bacon and, bacon and, okay, and onion. Bacon, onion, and arugula. That sounds good. You tell me when you need it. It's just kind of nice. Okay, on to our meats. So. Since the ham is already cooked, I'll slice that first, and then we'll slice the bacon last. It's all about keeping your station really nice and sanitary and clean. There's our beautiful ham there. And I think I'm just gonna cut off a chunk like this so that it's easier to slice really nice and thin. 
this way, we can practice our knife skills. Try and slice it as thin as possible. You could also cut it into chunks or cubes though. It really is up to you. Have a great night, Monica. See you tomorrow. Yeah, yum, arugulas. Everyone's favorite type of pizza, and go. Mom? cut this end up and not just throw it away. There we go. pizzas. Okay, next is our beautiful bacon. I'm going to cut the bacon a little bit thicker and we'll make lardons out of it and then we're going to fry it. And by me cutting it thicker here, is I'm gonna fry it still in the pan so it'll get crispy on the outside but it'll still stay nice and moist on the inside. And with this much fat, it's definitely gonna shrink quite a bit in the pan. So we're gonna use it all and see what we end up with. Also, one of my favorite kinds of pizzas is the pierogi one with potatoes and sour cream. That's our brownies. Just washing my bacon hands off. where we're at. Still a little jiggly in the center. I'm gonna say five more minutes. So the recipe was accurate when it said half an hour. Just so everyone knows. And then I'm gonna get my pan out for my bacon. Start frying that up.
And for anyone new that's watching, we have kind of prepped all of our pizza ingredients. So we have our cheese, pineapple, some meats over there, and our tomato sauce. We're just gonna fry up some bacon now. And then we also just pick some fresh arugula from the garden. So I can take the stems off of that and slice that up really nice and thin. Pretty pumped about that. Do we have any fresh tomatoes? There are some fresh tomatoes outside. So if you want to grab those and I can chop them up. Fresh tomatoes. Goat cheese. Fresh tomatoes. Now there's some open in here. So since it's winter, the arugula stems are pretty thick, so I'm just gonna pick off the nice leaves. Cause it's quite strong right now. We don't wanna overpower any of our other ingredients. So a little bit is gonna go a long way here. Whew, I can already smell how peppery it is. I think I'm only gonna use about that much of a handful. It almost has a bite like wasabi right now. It's gonna be super delicious. And we just got some fresh tomatoes in as well. bacon. You guys want to watch the dough or the bacon? And then I just grabbed this little cooling rack for the brownies. I'm just gonna stick them over here, actually. Hi. They got a minute left on them. In the meantime, though, I'm gonna chop up my arugula really fine. Sizzle. Sizzle in. Okay, oven's done. Our brownies they just have a little jiggle in the middle which is exactly what we're looking for 
That way they'll be a little bit ooey and gooey in the middle. And we gotta sprinkle them with the chocolate pearls. Oh, I'm gonna bring them back over here. You guys can watch them melt on. do chocolate chips whatever you feel brownies are a good vessel for anything I think that looks good yum Okay, next up is our tomato. We're gonna dice these pretty large, I think. We want some nice big chunks of fresh tomato. Another good sauce for pizza is a nice pesto of sorts. Really, really good stays a little bit more fresh. It's not as heavy as the tomato sauce. So, our nice fresh ingredients there. I think that's it for chopping. So I can get rid of the board and just put all of the ingredients out in front of me here so you guys can see. quite a bit. So you can use just a slotted spoon to get it out of the pan. I can use that in there, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. And then one thing I always like to do is keep the leftover bacon fat for making eggs on the weekend. I've also made caramel before with bacon fat. That works really well. Okay, open up this nice pack of meat we have here. Green box. Hello. How are you today? Happy Sunday. I need more surface area. Pull these all down a bit. Here's all of our pizza ingredients so far. 
These little black and pink things are olives. Then we have some cheese. Let's see, there we go. Do a double layer here. Boom. Get this in. Boom. This is like a harder matzo cheese. And this one is softer. And then here's our awesome pizza dough that's been resting for 24 hours now. And then I think I'm gonna turn on the oven now to 500. That's what we're gonna bake this dough at because it has a lot of hydration in it. And then we can start assembling our pizzas. You'll have to boost up your pan. Yep. And I have two different pans that I'm using today. So I have this rectangular sheet pan, as well as this round one. So we'll do two different kind of styles of pizza, I think. This guy can stay over. So this bigger dough is for the rectangle pan, and we're just gonna press it in. I like the kasha bread. And I'm just gonna pour in some oil on the bottom of the pan first. That way it won't stick at all. Yeah, send the pizza. FedEx. It won't be hot and fresh though. And this is gonna get sticky, I think. But that's the fun part. Actually, it's a lot less sticky than when I started today, so that's really good. That's why we let it rest that extra half an hour. I just need to it out. I need the salad spinner for me. Okay. underneath me. Kind of push it out. <laughs> That's my shin. Okay. And this dough is a lot more forgiving than just a yeast pizza dough. That's why I like to use the softer ones. If you want a really big press or not, you can pull out a lot more dough towards the edges. It's really up to you. I think that's why I like making pizza so much. And then you also don't want it too thick in the middle because we're putting all that topping on. So it might get a little bit soggy if we keep that really thick. So the middle is just a little bit thinner than the crust. Cute. And then the second dough, the round one, we're gonna stretch out like a round pizza. So I'll show you how to do that next. I got really good at this at one of my last jobs. And I definitely love doing it. I don't even know how many pizzas I made there. Thousands. 
You want a stuffed crust, Chuck? We could do that. this one into a nice ball. You need it to have some structure at least before you make it into a round. So this can just be set down and it's holding its shape so that's really good. So we're just going to put a little bit of flour on top push down the middle part. You don't want to touch the outside at all because that's where our crust is going to be. So I usually leave about an inch to half an inch. And then if you need to, lift up the pizza and keep it nice and floured underneath. You can keep adding dough as you see, or adding flour as you see fit if it keeps sticking. It's definitely a different type of dough than what I'm used to. But it's nice to let the gravity do the work sometimes so you can take it on your knuckles and just stretch it. If it tears, this is the best part. You can just sew it back up. Keeping the middle nice and thin. That's the important part here. And then we have some nice crust on the outside. I'm going to slide that onto the pan. And see what we have going on. If there's any really thin spots, we're just going to crimp those up now. And that looks good. So there's our round pizza. Didn't need too, too much flour with it, so that's good. Sorry, I only speak English. I don't know what you're saying. And it's time to build some pizzas. I'm just going to clean up the flour before I start anything. Okay, what's the first kind of pizza I should make? What kind of combo do you guys think? I also have some basil, mint, and dill. Think. Move this 
this onto here. Canadian. I don't know, but we don't have mushrooms. Okay, let's do this one first. I feel like it might stick. But we won't know unless we bake it. And like I said, I never worked with this dough before, so... I'm not sure what's going to happen. This is me just experimenting at home. Meat lovers stuffed crust. Okay, so our oven's ready, which is really good. This pizza dough seems really soft, but whatever. We're rolling with it. You can add as much or as little sauce as you want. Don't add too much or else your center is going to be all soggy. And then I always leave a little bit of an edge for the crust. This is going to be a very rustic pizza, I think. So I'm going to start with some of the shredded matzo here. <laughs> yeah, poor people. That's gonna be our base layer. Just get a nice covering of that. I'm gonna move that out of the way. And then, what next? Salami. Salami, onions. We'll just do this one all meat lovers. It's gonna be the meat stuff. So I'll do all three of the meats here. Layered really nice. So that was the pepper salami and now I'm doing a spicy capicolo. And I'm just overlapping the meats a little bit as I put them on. That way it won't fall apart when you cut it later. And then before I do the next meat, I'm gonna do just a little bit of these onions. I slice them really nice and thin because I don't like big bites of onions. And then they're gonna kind of fry up with me putting on this really fatty meat. Should we do olives on this one too? I think so. Mixed olives. And then I'm gonna finish it with some parm. And actually maybe some of this soft ricotta. Yeah. little dollops of the ricotta everywhere. And yes, don't be afraid to use your hands. 
It's like playing with your food. Just no one's gonna get mad at you for it now. And I'm gonna put the basil on torn up. Sorry, Chuck. Yeah, I'll put the basil on before I do the parm just so it doesn't burn in the oven. And that way it won't fall off when we cut it later. So just tear up little chunks. It's like you're creating art. Sprinkle in a parm. And then I'm just gonna oil the outside of this crust. That way it'll brown up really nicely. So just drizzle some olive oil on there. And I think that is gonna go into the oven soon but I am gonna bake both pizzas at the same time so here's the first one looks super good here's our big one so I'm going to section this off I think into three different kinds that's why I really love doing the rectangular Roman style is they always have like just little rectangles of sliced pizza and you can get a bunch of different kinds. Shake cheese on the crust, yeah. So like Chuck, we can make a stuffed crust on this side and just like fold it over. We can do that. Should I do it now? Let's see. Let's do like a line of cheese. Stuffed crust. And hopefully the dough's not too crazy soft. Fold it over. Yeah, we're going there tonight, fam. It's getting cheesy. Boom, there you go. <laughs> if you want, I don't know if I can press it down or out anymore. So Looks like it. There's Chuck's crest. Put I put the matzah in. Oh, you could easily make this, Chuck. It wasn't hard. Okay, so now let's get our sauce on there. Keep in mind, we still want our outside crust layer. That is my preference, though. If you don't like crust, then you definitely don't have to have it. That's the best part about the sheet pan pizza. You can put sauce right to the edge. Okay, that looks good. Done getting saucy. Holy, that does look good on camera, doesn't it? <laughs> so, first end for Chuck, should we do the BLT style? Bacon, yeah. tomato, cheese. So I'll put the tomatoes on first. Stove temp is 500, so it, 
as high as you can go, pretty much. But that's just because of the style of dough I'm using. It's really wet. So we got our fresh tomato. Let's get our bacon lardons on there. Maybe we'll do a couple layers. So I'll put some of that mozz on now. Are you doing three, to hold that all together. Are you doing three kinds on that? Yeah, I'm going to do three kinds. And then let's put some more bacon. This is Sam's bacon that he made, by the way. It's super good. And then you know what? Let's do some of these bigger chunks of cheese. Let those slowly melt in and get gooey. This is the cheesiest side. How long? See that? I don't know because I've never baked this before. But I would say probably 15 to 20 minutes for this big guy and maybe 10 for this thinner round one. So next one I'm gonna do is a Hawaiian. So I'm gonna do matzo down first. I always like to put cheese down first, that way your toppings don't all slide off the pizza. And then we can just layer our ham on there, slice nice and thin. If we want to make it a little bit spicy, I think I might add some capicolo. Let's do some parm. It's a big chunk of parm. And then a couple of slices of the capicolo. Keep in mind you also want kind of the same amount of ingredients all the way through this pizza just so it all bakes at the same time. Like you don't want to pile up one part really heavy and another part not too much. Pineapple time. Do you want some wine here? I'm okay, thanks. That looks good. Let's, what other kind of cheese do we want? I think I'll just finish with a little bit more parm. I like the funky cheese. Okay, next one, we'll do, well, what do you want? the salami, I think. Or maybe I'll just do a plain like margarita style, yeah. So that's just cheese and tomato and basil. Really simple, but honestly, one of my favorite styles of pizza. So let's do fresh tomatoes on here. Then I'll tear a bunch of basil. These are huge. Leaves of basil. Can I have to short chunk something? No problem. Get on in here. The wine has been poured. I 
I like basil, so I'm going to put a lot on there. And then I'm also going to put some of this softer matzo on to melt in between. And I think we're good. It's so pretty. I'm just going to snap a quick photo of these before we get started so I can post it later. But here we are. So we got BLT stuffed crust with bacon and fresh tomato. Then the middle is our Hawaiian with some spicy capicolo. And our end over here is the margarita. Nice and simple. And then anyone new watching, we just did a nice round pie, nice and thin crust with all three meats, so capicolo, soppressata, and salami. And we added some olives and ricotta, as well as basil and the other cheeses. Now those pies are gonna go in guys, so you definitely have quite a bit of the ingredients left over. But the dough is really easy to make if you want to make it again or you can make calzones. So I'm gonna put the bigger pizza on top right now. the timer for 10 minutes. And we're going to go from there. I really don't know how long it's going to take. The pizzas I used to make in the forno oven only took two minutes to bake. So this is a little bit different for me. This ain't no forno oven. This ain't no forno oven. While we wait though, maybe we'll have a cheese snack. Mozza's is good and soft. So I do have quite a bit of the meats left over. These are also freezable if you don't want to use them all at once. And I'm just going to put a couple of the ingredients away now while we wait. pray that the dough doesn't go over the pan in the oven. Yeah, pizza every day. All day, every day. We didn't even use our goat cheese. That's okay. I 
definitely getting hungry. Ready to eat pretty soon here. Hopefully we'll eat by six. Or in like 20-ish minutes. the olives out just in case we want to garnish with more of those and same with the pineapple and then we still have our arugula out for garnishing always put that on fresh it doesn't work very well when you cook it and then I'm just gonna bag up the meats that we have left And honestly, I can smell the pizzas already. It smells too good. It's only been four minutes. Might have to test a piece of meat too. Yum. Did you guys see the dessert yet? The brownies? I think I was done the brownies before you got it. So, here they are. They're peanut butter brownies. And then we put crispy chocolate pearls on top after they were baked. So they kind of melted on. And that's it. That's our nice little dessert. Not healthy. Guys, it smells good. Holy, it's blowing up already. I'll show you in a sec. Might have to do this. Okay, ready? I'm going for the peak. Oh, it's blowing up. Not so Another pizza I really like to make is a pesto chicken. It's like roasted red peppers and stuff. Really good. Okay, we got three minutes. And it's sizzling. You gotta turn it up.
I'm so ready. No, we don't have those a pizza cutter. the round one on the bottom real quick. One minute. Awesome. Is the dressing? And we're also doing Caesar salad tonight. Really simple dinner. Fresh cracked pepper too, if anyone wants. Okay. Timer off. Holy. This is where we're at, guys. I'm just gonna feel the crust. See if I can peel it off of there. I knew it would get a little bit stuck in some parts oh, though, good. but it's not that bad. I thought it would be worse. So I'm gonna say this needs maybe two more minutes. But I'm also going to rotate the top rectangular one, which I'll just show you real quick. It's looking really good too. So that is where we're at. I would say we got maybe five more minutes on that one too. Let's do one minute for the round one. And then we'll add a couple more minutes for the bigger one if we need. They're looking good. Let's just dress your own salad. Sounds good. And then because we're gonna cut on the pan, definitely use a cheaper knife. You don't wanna wreck your nice knife on a metal pan. Yeah, a little bit longer. And I think I'm gonna take the rectangular one out of its pan just cause it's a nonstick pan. We don't wanna ruin that pan by cutting it. I'm gonna wipe my board off real quick. That was our little round pizza, which I'll check in a second. Put 
Where's my mitts? dark color is going to give you all of the flavor so don't be scared to push your crust a little bit I'm gonna say three minutes for the big one and then we're laughing the pizza right on this big cutting board should work great we're not gonna cut the round one just yet because once we cut it all of the tomato sauce and stuff is gonna soak into the bottom crust where we cut it so we want it to stay really nice and crispy so that's okay there to rest for a couple minutes while the other pizza finishes up. Definitely proud of how the dough looks though. And you know me, I always gotta take my photos. Gotta stay on that social media game. You can definitely tell I could have put the pizza sauce a little bit closer to the edge here, but I didn't know how the dough was going to bake, so I'll remember that for next time. It's still going to be delicious. And then we're having a pizza party. Viali, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Hope you're enjoying our pizza party so far. Let's take this big one out. even think you want to look at this right now I don't even think so I'll just leave that there <laughs> so, good. so to garnish with the arugula on this side we'll cut it up first and then put the arugula on just so our knife doesn't get messy and then I will probably put some black pepper on the margarita side, just because I think that would be really good. But let's check how our crust is in this pan and see if I can get it out onto the board. I did put quite a bit of olive oil, so I'm hoping that it didn't stick. But if it did, well then, shoot. Guess you can't really trust a non-stick pen. Thank you. I love pizza. 
I love making it. I love eating it. Yeah! Smoked meats. I think I need a little bit of a sturdier knife here. Oh. I'm going to be really upset at this stuff. Because then what kind of nonstick pan is that? <laughs> Y'all feel me or what? Okay, first things first. Let's see what happens when we cut down the middle. One way for your pizza not to stick would be parchment. <laughs> but I was putting my full uh, trust in this pan of the non-stick ability. And I can see that it has failed me. But this is a live stream. This ain't no staged cooking show. So you get to see what actually happens in home kitchens. Not even really stuck. I don't know what's going on here. Because this whole side is coming off. Just in a couple spots, in a couple spots. Right? Might just be where the dough is really wet. Yeah. And I kind of knew that might happen. Oh, there you go. Yeah, right there. It's stuck right on the side. Okay, so we're, we're getting there, guys. We're okay. getting there. Get a slice into this just so we can see what's going on. I'm gonna cut this into four because there's four of us, so we all wanted a little bit of each one. Ooh, the cheese really baked into the crust, didn't it? This is our BLT stuffed crust one that we're gonna garnish with the arugula. I have to taste the crust. It was good. Yeah, or cornmeal, semolina flour. There's a lot of different options you guys could use. I've used something really interesting called spent grain which is the dehydrated drain or grains left over from the brewing process. I'm just gonna grab a plate here. So I can lift that off. Looks good. Everything's baked through. You can see our little stuffed crust there. I think I'm just going to keep going down this side. So you guys can see each pizza. See what I'm dealing with here.
This is what happens when you're used to cooking on a wood stone. Not the same, but Hawaiian is up. If anyone wants this dough recipe, let me know and I can definitely send it your way. It was made with a biga, so traditional Italian style. And then lastly, our margarita. Definitely getting my workout here today. There's our marg. And then I'm gonna bring over our round one, which that one did not really stick at all. So I'm super pumped about that. Sounds good, Chuck. Thanks guys for watching. I'll for sure have to make you a pizza one day. Whatever you want. This one has a ton of meat on it. It's a little bit hard to get through. Wish I had a pizza cutter right now. That's all good. Prior planning. Okay, that one's great. I really like the way the ricotta browned up on this one. Just destroy it. All I'm trying to show you guys here though is that the dough is cooked properly because it definitely didn't take very long. So there's the thin crust version. And I'm pretty stoked on that. So we're gonna all dig in here. Should I eat a slice? Yeah. Take a bite. Okay, let's do the marg. Mmm. The dough is very similar to, I would say a focaccia bread is the closest thing but the crust is really nice and then you get all of these wonderful spongy bubbles on the inside so it doesn't feel really heavy when you're eating it and I like that you can do two different variations with this dough as well so I did one a thicker crust style and then one a thin crust and both worked out so thumbs up to that I'm just gonna wash my hands off And obviously next time I'll be putting a cornmeal on the bottom of the rectangular pan because I know not to trust it. But everything else turned out really well. So thanks everyone for joining the pizza party with me and I hope to see you hopefully this week coming up. Tomorrow I'll be on around 3 p.m. PST and we're doing Meatless Monday with Southwest Loaded Potatoes. So stay tuned for that. Thanks everyone. Cook with Kate is out.